Okay guys, so yesterday uh, I made a video showing how I raised the uh, species of moth that were Asian and from like Indonesia and stuff. And today I'm going to show you how I raised the ones that need a little bit more chilliness to uh, a little bit more of the cold to hatch. So we're going to start with this. Alright, what do we have here? These are my Saturnia Pavona cocoons. Got three females and three males. I got quite a few of these cocoons specifically because I knew I could easily just hatch them and raise them, and if they didn't hatch this season, they'll hatch next spring, I could just overwinter them. And stuff like that. Uh, you can see just rattle one out right here. See the size difference between the male and the female. This is our male, this is our female. Put them back inside their cocoons. During the winter, near the end of it, I'm going to show you guys all of my overwintering stuff that I have because I like to go out in the forest and look for cocoons and moths and stuff like luna moths, tropias, polyphenus, tulip, silk moths, lunas. They're everywhere in the forest if you just look for them and I like to do that. Yesterday when I was showing you all those cocoons under that light, I said that outside I had these uh, Rodinia Fuhax cocoons and let's show you those. Rodinia Fuhox is probably one of my most favorite moths. The male fell out of its cocoon, but... That was the male. These guys will hatch around October. It's currently like really late September, so those guys will come out real quick. Here we have the female. That'll her out of there. I hope that they're both perfectly healthy and will hatch and pair. The eggs over winter, which is something that I have to deal with, but it's fine. It actually makes it easier that the eggs, it makes it easier that something here has to overwinter because I really want to raise those Antarea Janas and Curricula Trifenestra, but it's a little bit hard to do that with the uh, them not overwintering in any stage. So they will hatch, and then the caterpillars will hatch and feed, and I'll probably have cocoons in winter when I can't feed the caterpillars, and I wouldn't be able to raise them again. But, uh, I can find a way to, uh, deal with that. 
the Rodinia Fuhawks, though, those overwinter his eggs, so I can just keep those till spring. And the uh, Saturnia Pavona, they overwinter his cocoon, so that will definitely be able to easily um, raise. I just gotta keep them there. So, in that little box, you'll see the Saturnia Pavonas for a third time, and the eggs of Rodinia Fuhawks as an overwintering thing in there. Uh, Expect to see a lot more North American cocoons that I go out and just look for during the winter time for that box. Uh, the giant Imperial Moth caterpillar that I filmed on video, uh, I put it in there, but when I left from my dad's house to my mom's house, um, it was already a pre pupae. The legs had retracted, so when I get back over there, it should probably be a pupa. A freshly made pupa, which will also go into our overwintering box. But, uh, see you guys until then. Bye.